help you guys to develop not only your idea but develop yourself because you are the main resource and main i don't know acceleration power and everything what can be in your idea so paul from gdt gtd estonia will help you how to become person who set up the uh, purposes aims and achieve them and get all the necessary job done so paul the zoom is yours thank you so uh, let me see i put the share button so i can show my screen as well and let me know if, if that works it works okay. perfectly okay very good so thank you thank you jana and uh, the prototon team to for uh, inviting us here and very nice to be here in front of uh, people who are trying to create something new done so um, I'll, um, I'll go into the, my background a little bit later. So also why I'm wearing this kind of a pretentious T-shirt, but, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's great to be back in uh, with people who are, who are kind of creating new stuff. So my name is Paul Wahur. I'm with uh, GTD Estonia. That GTD stands for Getting Things Done. And it's a personal productivity methodology that I think is very useful for, for everyone, but mostly for people who use their head for working. And I think that's, that's everybody in here. So uh, if I can move to the next slide. Yes, I can. So I'm um, going to talk a lot of stuff. I'm going to cover today what getting things done is so that you are familiar with it. You know, um, you know what, what, how it works. Uh, we're also going to uh, show you some tips that you can put into your work right away and then give you kind of a taste of, of how, how that actually kind of, uh, might, might be helpful for you. Um, it's a um, seemingly simple methodology, but there's a lot behind it. And there is a lot uh, that it affects. Uh, it's been adopted worldwide, uh, you know, organizations uh, by the best and the brightest, any industry, any company size, mom and pop shops, startups, Fortune 500s, um, NGOs, educational, uh, you know, places, uh, churches, etc. So it has this universal applicability. And uh, the guy behind who is uh, great at that is, uh, is David Allen. So he was in the previous picture and in this picture. Um, so. Um, he uh, came up with this uh, methodology about 20, uh, so he came out with a book about this 20 years ago, and that's the name of the book, Getting Things Done. By the way, I, uh, my colleague Neme put a question into the chat where he asked if anybody's already familiar with it. So uh, with the editing is kind of weird, but he's gonna put there like uh, four or five options that you can choose from to kind of respond. So then we're gonna get a sense of, of uh, you know, uh, how familiar you are with, uh, with the thing. So I'll see if I can see the, chat question somewhere as well, but it's like here. Oh yeah, okay, I can put out chat. So so yeah, okay, name and name and now put the new one. So A, B, C, D, you can kind of really quickly answer if you're familiar with this or not. So then it's then it's kind of good to know, oh, we have somebody who has already done it as well, cool. Anyway, so he, um, uh, David Allen, he came up with this already 40 years ago uh, in the uh, late eighties. Um, and then he started kind of, oh, early 80s, sorry, yeah, 40 years ago, early 80s, um, it's not that long ago. Um, and um, kind of over the years, he kind of developed into a coaching habit, a coaching practice, where he went to work with uh, executives, etc., cetera, and uh, allowing them to get more control and more focus on their work. And then it became a training uh, program. And then in the 19 or 2001, it came out as a book, so, so everybody can kind of learn it. And since then, it's uh, it's kind of uh, being become a bestseller. It stays uh, in the top ten of, of uh, productivity books on Amazon, you know, almost constantly. Uh, and uh, it's been sold like over almost like three million books uh, worldwide. Plus, there has been trainings done it worldwide as well. Um, David himself, he grew up in US, um, uh, had his business in uh, David Allen Company in, in in the West Coast. But then six, seven years ago, he moved to uh, Amsterdam, uh, where you can you see the picture as well on the bicycle there. And now he runs uh, this uh, remote company uh, globally, getting this training uh, worldwide to the businesses, etc. So, okay, I can see some, uh, some very good uh, answers there. So let's see what else. Um, yeah, and the, the, the David Allen company is uh, the, Developing this further, uh, kind of uh, pro training programs. We have, uh, you know, in person we have uh, virtual pro training programs, etc. And there's he wrote about uh, four or five books uh, on this topic, so so different kind of applications. And um, you know, relatively recently, kind of happy news is, uh, at least from our perspective, and I hope from 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 our clients' perspective as well, that that we also now have uh, getting things done as, uh, represented in Estonia. As far as I know, I know there's people from Latvia in here. 
uh, but uh, the, there is nobody in Latvia, but we, we can support Latvians as well uh, with an, our English training uh, offerings. That's all we have. We don't have an Estonian offering at the moment, only, only in English. So uh, for myself, I started practicing uh, getting things done eight years ago, and that has significantly improved my life and my work results. Most of that time I have worked in Microsoft, uh, and uh, you can imagine that's as a demanding workplace as, 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 as there could be. So uh, for me, uh, definitely getting things done, first of all, allowed me to survive there and then uh, allowed me to try there as well. What I've been doing there mostly is, is kind of uh, internal uh, events and, and, uh, learn, and kind of learning and development activities. And I've been doing hackathons. So that's why I have a t-shirt of this. I have like a collection of, of 20 hackathon t-shirts. So, uh, so uh, and, and um, I've been also uh, participating on, I haven't been into Prototron, but I have been to other Estonian kind of startup uh, scene events like uh, Garage 48. I've been to two hardware hackathons. I, I'm not a hardware person. I'm, I'm pro project manager, program manager myself. Uh, but I've been to two um, hardware hackathons and in both of them, uh, I hope I contribute, we got that second place. So, 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 but none of those unfortunately become uh, like a real, real project afterwards, but it was a lot of fun. So, so I kind of get what you feel, uh, but obviously this is much more intense and much more uh, bigger uh, uh, kind of commitment than, than hackathons are. So yeah, uh, doing GTD has actually kind of, um, kind of uh, made me more productive, but also at the same time, quite, uh, you know, curiously reduced my stress. So this is kind of a, almost like a, you know, paradox of, you know, you, you believe that if you want to achieve more, you need to work harder and, and be more stressed and, 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 you know, put yourself on the edge of burnout. But, but this is not the case. Actually, it's, it's possible to, to get less stress and be more productive. And uh, yeah, in my life, it's, it's kind of, I, my work got easier and easier when I was doing it and I got more and more you know, bigger uh, challenges to work with, which has been very grateful. <clears throat> um, so two years ago, I kind of uh, had a little kind of pause in my, in, my, in my life and thought like, hey, I need to become an entrepreneur again. I've been to two businesses, uh, uh, GTA. <laughs> uh, yeah, GTA, I don't know what's, what's that, but, but yeah, somebody has put a question in the chat. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe somebody else could help that. But yeah, two years ago, I took on a project like uh, become a GTD coach. And this has ended up uh, uh, about six months ago, launching uh, GTD Estonia. Uh, you can go gettingthingsdone.ee to see that. And, and that's been great. And I managed to meet David Allen two years ago on, on, the, on a big conference in, in Amsterdam. So uh, we are, yeah, the company behind it uh, is uh, GTD Estonia Sprite And uh, our goal is to introduce modern working practices in Estonia. So our first one that we do is, is getting things done, but we are also preparing to bring other practices uh, to market such as holacracy and uh, decision intelligence selling. But let's focus into the GTD today, and uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about how you can be properly engaged with your work and life. And uh, behind that is uh, the GTD, there's a basic principle uh, which is validated by cognitive science, uh, and that is that your mind is for having ideas and not for holding them. So um, what the science has found out is, is that uh, your mind can handle four critical things and once uh, keeping them in the kind of the active memory, so to say. If uh, like a fifth or sixth thing comes in, then one of the, this one of fifth things is forgotten about. And you can actually experience yourself that as well when you're gonna probably have had in a situation where you're moving, when, whether you're home or whether you're office from one room to another, to do something in another room. And on your way, you see things and think, well, oh yeah, yeah, I need to fix that. Or that. And you arrive at that room and you don't remember anymore <laughs> why you went there, right? So I, that, at least that's maybe so I have had that, maybe it's because of, you know, of uh, early early age dementia, but I ma imagine that probably most of people have had this kind of thing, and that's the end of the demonstrates that that you know you can have like only so limited amount in your conscious memory. Once it's it's dropped from there, it's kind of a, it comes back, but then in very cons inconsistent state. So your brain is very good uh, for recognizing things. So actually, that's what the AI is uh, you know uh, you know it's uh, tackling with right because it's kind of. It's very hard to uh, teach AI to recognize things consistently, right? Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's learning hard and hard. For us, it's no problem. You can see like, uh, you know, there's a pile of wood and you can recognize like a wooden chair among those like in, in, a, in a half a second, right? And, and for, you know, AI, that would be much, much more harder. So we are, brain is very good for recognizing, but it's not very good for remembering consistently. So, and that's why kind of GTD matters is, is that, um, 
in, in, the, in a world we have so much information coming towards us and, and, and especially people like you who put yourself out there to do something new and something exciting, you know, you, you come to Prototron and you have like these uh, sessions every day plus, plus additional information coming in of how do you get this control uh, on this over information overload and then bring, uh, bring order to, to this chaos. <clears throat> so um, as I'm saying, you've got a lot of stuff coming to you and usually this stuff, even if it's like well-prepared uh, by, by Prototron team, et cetera, it still doesn't show up like in a clear meaning like, hey, I'm this and this is what you need to do with me. Rather, you know, things show up like this, you know, and, and uh, probably I imagine that might be also the current status of your mind, uh, what's going in your mind, and also probably something that's going on in your um, uh, in your email inbox, right? So or wherever message message board, Slack's where you're in. So actually, that would be interesting to know. My my colleague uh, will put the next question in the chat, and this is about uh, how many emails do you have uh, in your inbox at the moment? That would be very interesting to know. So while he's doing that, I'll, I'll continue. So. Um, so yeah, probably I think you might recognize this uh, something as an office of your mind. Well, it doesn't show up in a clear and next actions and meanings, it shows up like this. So, but what if your mind uh, could be like uh, this? So this is an image, probably we got this particular photo somewhere on the internet, but also like a image, uh, the mind like water image is something uh, David Allen got from um, martial arts. So uh, he, he did in his youth uh, the, uh, the karate, uh, karate, it's like I'm forgetting the English words now. Anyway, he, he karate, right? So, and then uh, there, uh, when you get to the higher levels after you've learned how you fall and how you, how you kick, etc., you need to get where you can clear your mind of any kind of distractions. So you can uh, project power from, from the very most powerful place uh, you can, which is being relaxed. So uh, the ability to get this place, uh, so we want, this is what GTD is about, the ability to get to this place where you can navigate the madness of the world uh, is what we are after, and this is doable. Uh, but uh, a lot of people would say like, hey, yeah, sure, you know, like, this is great. I, I know how to do that. I need more time, right? The, the kind of the bad news is that um, you can't get more time. We, everybody we have 24 hours, you know. Uh, me, you, you know, like um, Elon Musk, whoever, you know, uh, Steve Jobs even had 24 hours, although they, they claim otherwise. The point here being is that uh, time management doesn't really kind of work because it's not impossible to manage time and come up with less time or more time. Right? We have still the same amount. Um, uh, so, um, yeah, th thanks. People are already replying to the to the kind of the uh, question. So it's not a question about how many unread you have, how many emails do you have uh, in your inbox, total ones, read one as well. So and uh, Andre is uh, challenging everybody who has more wins, but then Andre, you need to put in uh, the actual number, not thousand plus. So <laughs> uh, twenty nine thousand. Yeah, okay, one hundred sixty one unread. So okay, we'll we'll have a lot lot to kind of uh, talk about then. Um, so yeah, so. The ability to get to this place, uh, this kind of where your mind like water is, is what is doable. And you don't need more time. As I said, what you need is uh, you need more, uh, you need more space uh, and you need more uh, uh, room in your head. And why is that? Because I'm going to ask a few rhetorical questions. So how much time does it take to have a good idea? It actually takes zero time. Like it's, you can't like sit down and it's like, hey, you know, I'm going to take two hours at the end of the two hours, I'm going to have a good idea. You can have a good idea in the shower, actually, without even thinking about it, right? Uh, when you're maybe working on your, uh, on your project, something like that. So it doesn't take, um, it doesn't take actually time, it takes room. Same to be with innovation, like innovation comes, uh, you know, after probably some work, but, but then it doesn't kind of, you, you don't start like squeezing it out of your head and it takes you half an hour, right? No, it, it comes comes at, at its own pace and come quite suddenly. And same to be like also, you know, in your personal uh, sphere, how much time does it take to be a good parent or, or, or a good partner? No, it doesn't take time, it just takes uh, space and room. Internal room, cognitive room to be present in the situation. Um, having space uh, as in uh, having a freedom and freedom to do kind of uh, really cool things. First of all, be creative. So imagine, you know, being here on, on uh, you know, prototype uh, uh, accelerator. Uh, this is what, what you're all about, like how, how to be creative in, in your marketing, in your, in your sales, in your, 
in your uh, product development, etc. And this is uh, the freedom that you need. Or obviously freedom to be strategic. Are you actually doing the right thing? So you have all these options in front of you and uh, you know, you're just being run one, one by after another, but are you making the right decisions? And for this, you don't need more time. You need room, a room in your head. And most importantly, um, you know, to have the freedom to simply be uh, wherever you are, totally there, and not being distracted with 16 different things or uh, what is it, uh, 5,965 emails in your inbox. <laughs> so uh, being present with, uh, with the client, being present with your kids, uh, or even just being present with yourself and taking a nap if, if that's the best, uh, best thing to do at that moment. That's the best place to uh, develop a new product from. Uh, this is the best place to negotiate a tough deal from. Uh, or have a difficult conversation, or simply putting kids to uh, bed at night. And that's what we are really after, and that's what uh, GTD was designed to do, to be able to intentionally create that state of uh, mind like water and not getting there accidentally, and li to live more from that state. And I think that should be the new normal. So um, what if you have the freedom to live your life in a very simple way that could manage the complexity of all of your responsibilities? It's a bit of a paradox of having simple effect focus and having a complex and not having a complex way to manage your complexity. It's basically like we already have something like that and that's called computer, like intense, intensely com uh, complex device by now. And it was when it started uh, 40 years ago, PC, but it's now no, even more complex now, but it actually makes our life really easy, right? It's kind of uh, no problem to have a call with uh, uh, 40 people, uh, you know, video call online, you know, at, at no cost. So, so that's what, uh, what GTD is also, is making this kind of uh, really complex things really simple and possible. And also allows you to have focus while being in a huge amount of complexity without letting anything fall through the cracks. So uh, GTD is a very simple way of managing uh, what we call the flow of life's work. And actually it's not something that you do once and it fixes your life. It's instead it becomes your way of thinking about and engaging uh, with your life's work. And we call it uh, installed thought process, or you can think about it also as operating system or systematic approach, um, which is actually better. We, we don't give you a GTD system. That's something you build up for yourself. We give you a systematic approach, which is better than a rigid system because your life changes and, and you will change as well. And this methodology can help you stay focused and in charge in those changing circumstances. And actually you all know how to do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to remind you that um, you are implement implementing it already. So uh, for example, obviously, you know, you, you are on your um, startups and projects and you're not going to office, but I imagine everybody has at some point worked at an office. And when you have taken home something from work that you definitely need to take back to the office uh, tomorrow, what have you done? What kind of uh, strategies have you implemented so, so that you haven't, uh, uh, that you're not kind of uh, forgot about it. So please write it in the chat or you can maybe also open your microphone and, and say it on the call, but I'm gonna just read some of the answers uh, from the uh, inbox question before. Can, yeah. can you quickly repeat the question there? The question was, uh, if you have something you have uh, taken uh, home that you need to take back to office the next morning, what kind of strategies you have employed to not forget about it in the morning, but so that you don't need to think about it in the evening anymore. What have you done? Trello. I, I put it as an event uh, in the morning in my calendar, and then I can forget about that. Okay. Okay. Calendar also. Calendar also. Okay. Actually, a really good one, and I recommend this for everybody, is just if you have a phone with an AI in it, get like start learning how to use that because that makes life really easy. You just before you go to sleep, you can just say, set a reminder for 9 a.m. that I need to do something, and it will go for it. That is a really great, quick, easy way. Uh, Precondition: have a good English, <laughs> because I've I've tried. I, I haven't tried in a recently. Maybe it's got better, but I originally tried. It's like Siri is like, hey Siri, you know whatever, do this. It's like. Sorry, I did not really get that, like, <laughs> which was a really kind of a okay, sorry. Uh, nice way of saying like, like you have a bad accent. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, thanks. So yeah, I, I can see some answers already uh, in the deck, like uh, yeah, the alarms, uh, Trello list, place it by the door, uh, put it next to the keys and wallets. 
And uh, yeah, so that's that's a good answer, and that's actually uh, something that we kind of um, also say that this is this is what you should do actually in, in a situation like that. So setting something up so that you see the right thing at the right time, because the thing is, when we were still going to the office, like when you woke up in the morning, depending of you know maybe some people like really woke up three hours earlier and then went to office. A lot of us, you know, probably an hour before or maybe less than before, and then the person who was actually going through the door. Uh, they weren't really going to woke up right so so you couldn't really rely on them going to maybe even seeing the notices but you know just putting something in the front of the door that's a uh, that's a kind of a, a good good way of like getting getting that that person's attention so and in, in a sense that's the whole game uh, it can get pretty sophisticated what you put in front of what but it's really about creating maps so you can orient and do the right things at the right time so obviously, I imagine most of you have looked at their calendar in the last 48 hours. I think the people who haven't done that uh, probably didn't make it to this meeting. Uh, but why we do that? So, so we know uh, where we have to be, when and, and exactly, when and where, right? So and what we are going to talk about is building a systematic way to put the right things in the right place at the right time, so you don't have to worry about them. And life in all its complexity is on cruise control. Um, there is actually a simple way of doing that, though it's not that simple to determine what do I need to put on map where, what's the contents of that map, and which maps do I need to see when, and that's where you can get some complexity. Uh, so it's a simple principle, it has a huge amount of complexity that it can be expanded to make it work, and it all comes down to five steps. So uh, these are steps that, uh, it's not the steps that David Allen made up, uh, but he recognized what happens when we are in a situation where we are out of control or out of focus and we want to get uh, back to control and focused. And for the next section, uh, if uh, anything is unclear, you know, just open your mic and ask your questions or I'll try to follow the chat, but it's quite chatty. So it's kind of, I'll, 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 otherwise I'll just keep reading that. So better to open a microphone. So uh, David Allen discovered those very five very discrete steps, each with its own tools and its best own techniques and best practices. And so those steps are, first of all, uh, capture, clarify is the second one, and third one is organize, fourth one is reflect, and fifth one is engage. So uh, um, uh, I can actually give you a quick example of how, how you do that in your everyday life, for example, Let's say, you know, it's the, the virus is over or whatever reason you have friends coming over uh, and you feel comfortable about this or you're gonna, you're gonna host them for the dinner and you want to do a dinner for them, right? So then do you go to your kitchen? So first of all, and the kitchen is a mess as it usually is. So what do you do there first? Uh, first of all, you capture. You're gonna take all the things that are not in the right place uh, and, and kind of, you know, grab those. Then you clarify what they are. So this is a, uh, what's a package of milk? Well, you smell it. Uh, is it. Is it still good? Can I put it back in the fridge or is it spoiled? So I need to throw it away. And oh, this is a dish. Is it a clean dish? Is it a dirty dish? Where do I need to kind of put it in the cupboard or should I clean it or wash it or put it in the washing machine? So that's the clarify step. And then right away you do the organize, you put the thing in the right place. Then once you're going to capture everything, clarify what they are, put it in the right places, then you reflect, step back and reflect to see if everything is kind of uh, in the right place, to have all you need to start cooking the food. And then the fifth step is you start engaging and, and preparing the food. So, but yeah, each step is, is quite discreet. So you can see this, this kind of what works on, on that level as well, but it, it works on any kind of level. So each step is quite discreet. Uh, let's look at them uh, in more detail one by one. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll have a little post and I can look at the questions and I have some, put you something to do and then I can maybe answer those questions that you put in the chat as well. So the first step is, is capture. And um, what you need to do is collect what has your attention. So whatever that is, uh, whether it's outside of you, whether it's inside of you or it's something in your head, this is what you need to do. Some of the things in our life are on cruise control. Uh, so you don't need to capture those. For example, you know, you're, if you use a car or if you use a computer, you know, uh, if the computer is working properly or a mobile phone is working properly, then, you know, you don't need to write on mobile phone. But if, for example, you are running out of space or, or the class is cracked or something like that, and this has your attention, this is something you, you're going to need to capture yourself. And uh, the idea here is, is to capture all the things that, that are pulling on you. And a lot of those things are in our head, right? So it's, it's the ideas that we have. It's like, you know, like, hey, 
it could be like, hey, how can where where can I take my product next? And we should maybe add that feature, etc. Or you know, should we get uh, should we start getting funding or something like that? Or or it could be also like, hey, I am out of cat food, uh, and they actually take uh, pretty much the same space. So uh, so yeah, we want to capture things that are pulling on you and and recognize what has your attention. So let's do a short version of capture here, uh, something that we call the mind sweep. So why, find something you can write with, uh, whether it's a pen on paper or it's a computer or a mobile phone, uh, that's all you need. Let's take five minutes uh, to write down things that has your attention. So here are the rules. Uh, don't elaborate. It's like, you can put in a, like a keyword if, if it's like, a, you know, whatever cat, uh, you know, needs, there's something wrong with the cat and you take a veteran, it's kind of a cat vet or something like that. So don't elaborate, uh, don't judge. Uh, just if it has your attention, write it down. If it's something like really silly, why, how, how does the Mars helicopter fly? Or something like that, doesn't matter, write it down. What's important is that it has your attention uh, and write as many items as you can. So I'll, I'll start the time now, uh, about halfway through, I'm gonna remind you about the time and remind the rules, but uh, just start uh, writing things down. And even if it's written somewhere else, go write it down and let's see what we come up with. So. Good luck. Is it what has our attention now or? Uh, yes. What, what has your attention right now? Yes. Yeah. Right now. Okay. And you can go dig deeper. Like maybe you remember something that had your attention earlier today or something like that. Whatever, you know. Yeah. Okay, so we are halfway through. Um, just dig deeper if, if you haven't. So just uh, keep in mind, uh, you need to write down a little kind of a, just a reminder about this. Don't elaborate, don't judge, whatever has your mind. You don't need to necessarily share it with everybody, anybody else, just for your sake. So, and uh, let's have another two minutes. Sorry, I, I didn't understand what I shall shall do with this list of the objects of what attention. Just just uh, keep it. We'll, we'll I'll discuss it afterwards. Just the idea is to create this list at this point. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank
Okay, so uh, time is up. So a few questions for you now. Uh, first of all, uh, how many items did you manage to write down? Just interesting to know. Uh, maybe you can put in the chat the number so we can compare. 20, 11, right, four, okay, uh, four, 11 and four. <laughs> 15, 10, okay, great. Magical numbers, <laughs> 13, 16, 17, okay. So uh, how many of you, or, or maybe uh, you, can, you can either open a chat or, or raise your hand, or I, don't, I don't know what features do we have here. How many of you got at least two or three things uh, out of your head that were only in your head that weren't written down anywhere else? Did anybody get any items that were on, on just on your head? Yep. Yep, okay, great, quite a lot. Okay, thanks Alexander, yes, and the chat. Great, so, um, and just a question, how do you, do you feel any different now? Uh, anybody? And how do you feel? Yeah, every time I clear or sweep my mind, then definitely it feels like, great, I don't need to hold this in my brain and try and remember it. Like it's not pulling my attention 24 seven. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's the reason why I make lists as well. Yeah, yeah, okay, very good, very good. So yeah, so absolutely. I mean, um, people feel great. Sometimes people also feel, I mean, what we say, we, people feel relief, but they also feel sometimes grief because it's like, oh man, there's so many stuff in my head that I don't need to write down. And these are very uh, logical uh, uh, kind of uh, feelings, but that's very interesting actually. It's nothing really actually changed in your world. I mean, Nicholas were feeling better and, and Indu as well. So, so uh, and probably others as well, but, uh, but then actually you feel a little bit better without actually doing any of those stuff. But, uh, but it's actually, this is the first step towards getting to this uh, mind uh, like water state. And I just uh, suggest not stop doing that. Um, you can do it in a mind sweep or you can do it then continuously, but just uh, keep writing things down. Uh, so, so it's not there only in your head because then it's kind of easier to handle those. But um, yes, oh yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. But it's a critical thing to get reminders or rememberings out of your head and get them objectified. So I just wanted to jump something forward. I saw one question in the in the chat. Um, I think Anzori asked that. Uh, I'll, I'll kind of capture that and I'll come back to it later because it's kind of best place to answer there. Uh, so I hope I, I put it in front of me. I hope I don't forget about it. Um, so each of these steps has its own worst and best practices. And the worst practice for, for the capture one is, is not doing that and keeping it in your head. Uh, uh, as I showed on one of the first slides, uh, your mind is for having ideas, not holding them. If you keep the things in your head, it creates this 24 seven spin that keeps reminding you about things in the wrong context and waking you up in the middle of the night about the cat food that you need. So actually this is something uh, personal that happened to me um, when I started applying uh, GDD was uh, I, uh, once I got implemented it, what ha stopped happening was this when I went to sleep and I kind of, you know, it's just already, you're going to the dreamland, it's uh, like just the eyes are closing and, and you know, your mind is closing, etc. And then half a second before that happens, you know, your mind reminds me, oh, you forgot to call Nicholas or, or you forgot to buy that thing, right? And it's like, well, thanks for reminding me, but it's kind of like a wrong place because, you know, I want to go to sleep, yeah? Notebook beside the bed. Got to yeah, do it. Yeah, notebook beside bed, exactly. But yeah, so so that's how you get rid of it. But but uh, but yeah, Nicholas is in bed. Like I'm in bed, and you know? I'm not going to call him right now. It's kind of wrong time to remind that. And that's kind of uh, that's where the things things go. Uh, if you have like more than these four things in your head, they go to your subconscious and they come out there like in the most inappropriate place. Uh, or maybe you forgot about the strategic thing that you needed to do three days ago. So you, you, what we say is your mind is a really terrible office. So worst practice is uh, park the things that have your attention in a place where you don't trust to see them at the right time. So that might be also outside of your brain where you don't look at them, but uh, your brain is, uh, your head is the worst place for that actually. The best practice is getting it out of your head. As, as Nicholas said, have a notebook next to your bed. Uh, keep externalizing uh, in a place that you trust you will see. So that's actually very important as well. And you know, practically it means uh, write things down. Uh, and you can improve your life a lot if you adopt that habit and make it easy uh, for you to write stuff down wherever you are. For example, thank you, Nicholas, for example, a notepad and pen by your bed. So you write down the things that wake you up at night or, or don't you know, stop you falling asleep. A uh, technical tool that we recommend is, uh, I'll put it a name in the here, is an app called Brain Toss. So like tossing something out of your head. Uh, and uh, this is a very simple app actually. <laughs> 
no, no, no big mystery to it. Uh, it's, it's, it's not for free. I think there might be some free uh, options there as well. But what it does is actually kind of you open up this app, you either can write, you can take a photo, or you can uh, record an audio. And once you click send there, it's kind of done and it sends this to your into your email inbox. Uh, so, so it's kind of then you're out of your head. You're walking around somewhere, you see something cool, you take a picture, send it out of your head. I usually use it instead of a notepad at, at, at night, and usually in the morning, I have five or six things in my inbox waiting uh, from me besides other stuff. So, but if you adopt only this habit uh, as, as writing things down, then you will become a compulsive list maker with lists and post its everywhere. So, we need to move on to the step number two, which is clarify. Um, now we have that identified what has our attention. We need to decide what do they have, why do they have our attention, and what do they mean to us, and what are we going to do about them, if anything at all. And we call this step clarifying. So the, the most kind of a key thing there is deciding what does it mean for me? Uh, what's, what's, what's the meaning of it? So when you're cleaning your kitchen, as I brought this example, you decide if a thing was trash or still usable. You know, you sniff the milk, you, you look at the dishes, etc., and then make a call about it. You need to, need to do the same thing about your emails, uh, the ideas that you have, things that are sitting on your desk or your inbox, and just you know stop there, look at this thing, focus on this, and say like, wait, what is this? What does it mean to me? What do I need to do about it? And there's a fairly simple formula for this, and this is actually for me one of the kind of the key. Uh, uh, kind of uh, GTD kind of uh, contributions to, to kind of productivity is, is going, going, working through uh, this, uh, this process. So how do you determine the, the meaning of things? So first thing you need to ask yourself is, what is it? Is it a request of you? Is it just an idea? What is it? If you work in a big organization, uh, or I imagine that probably applies to a small company as well, you get these emails where it's not really clear what is expected of you? And why did you get this email, right? So there's an email from HR, we have a new policy, blah, 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 et cetera. It's like, oh, did I you know, violate that policy already? Or do I need to kind of go to a training? It's kind of, you know, you need to dig in and figure that one out. So this question, what is it, might look like a dumb question, but it's quite important one. Uh, so, so to realize exactly what it is. And this is the first step to determine um, why, why is that thing in your world and, and uh, wh why it's in your head. So uh, then after that, the next question, key question you need to ask, is it actionable? Uh, is it something I can do something about or I have to do something about? And there are two possible answers and you would never uh, guess it. It is yes or no. So very simple binary choice there. Is it actionable, yes or no? So let's look no at first. If no, then it's not the end of the story yet for those things. You need to uh, decide where you put it. So first of all, obviously, best place uh, trash it. It's it's a it's a spam email or it's a one-off kind of thing. That's that's really doesn't matter. You can kind of throw it away, uh, no problem. The other thing is, well, you know, I, I, there's no action about it, but I want to keep it. So for example, this HR policy is probably it's saved somewhere on the on on the HR system as well. But best, you know, you, if you put it somewhere where you know it is, and maybe you have a folder called uh, you know uh, company policies or HR policy or something like that and you put it there if, if you're talking about an email. So you put it uh, in your reference system so you can come back to it later, but it's just like, you know, for reference, right? It's maybe you never come back to it uh, because the need doesn't arise, but you, you, you save it uh, to, to come back to it later. And the third option is incubate, incubate it. So basically put it on hold. It's something, um, might be something that doesn't have a actionable thing right now, but it potentially in the future might have. So a lot of ideas are like this, like, you know, Personal ones is, is, for example, yeah, I really love to travel, you know, maybe I want to go to Norway, you know, but I'm really not comfortable about uh, the traveling kind of restrictions and all the tests, what I need to do, etc. So, so too much hassle, but I'll save this and I'll put it on my, uh, what we call someday maybe list. It's where I incubate it. Or it might be like, you know, hey, uh, concerts are going to happen next year again, your favorite rock artist is going to come to the country. Uh, and we start selling tickets in six months. So, okay, this is a good to know because you know I want to make sure I get these tickets. So I'll, I'll save it in my uh, system uh, with a date, like you know, in six months' time, to like, right, hey, they start selling these tickets tomorrow. So these are things things that are not imp uh, immediately actionable, but you want to keep it and you, you put it in a uh, separate system, and we call it incubated. So now stuff gets interesting. So 
uh, if it's yes, before you decide what to do next, you need to decide what's, or what, where do you put it, right? You need to decide what's the next action. What's the very next thing you need to do about it? Uh, so what is this that moves forward, right? right? If it's, uh, for example, you know, I remember, sorry, Nicolas, speaking on you, but, but you are a very active participant, is uh, say, I remember, yeah, Nicolas had this kind of good reference, so I'll, I'll give him a call. Then the next idea is call Nicolas, right? And then, then, uh, then we'll see what we can do with that action, for example. So the first one is do it right away. Uh, the kind of a hard rule here or, or is if it takes less than two minutes, then do it right away. It's like, yeah, I promised to Nicholas to tell about, you know, whatever this, this app, you know, so I'll just grab the phone and call the Nicholas and, you know, maybe it's not there, I'll just leave a voicemail or whatever, but, but I'll get it done because it, it takes, uh, I, can, I can do it in two minutes. Uh, in case uh, you can't do it in two minutes, then uh, you, you may think maybe I'm not the right person for doing that. Maybe I need to delegate it to somebody. So obviously, if you're in a you know organizational setting and you have people working for you, that's what a lot of managers do. You know, something comes in from on high, and then he needs to put it some of his people working on it, and he delegates it. It might be also that you know uh, in your team uh, you're not the right person. Maybe you're the PM and, and sales guy, and this is a technical issue, so you pass it on to your CTO or, or your technical co-founder, right? Or um, it might be also that if you are in an organizational setting. And, uh, and uh, there is a decision you need to be made about it, and this is what your managers get paid for, then you'll pass it on to your, or pass it up to your manager. Or at home, you know, maybe, you know, this is, you agreed with your spouse that this is what you handle, that's what her, she handles or he handles, and you pass it on to them. So yeah, that's an option to delegate this action to somebody else, like, hey, can you do this, please? If that's not an option, you can do it right away and you can't delegate it, then the third option is defer it, meaning do it later. Uh, and then where you put it on your list uh, of, of this next action, what to do. So this is kind of, uh, there's one more question actually, yeah, uh, just before I, before I kind of sum it up, is a question, is there a project? So there might be something that uh, you want to do that doesn't get done in one next action. So maybe it's like, you know, in the, in the example where, where I have Nicholas is like, maybe the, the task was, you know, uh, to, uh, you know, download this cool app that Nicholas told me about. So my next action was to call Nicholas and ask like, hey, can you remember, can you remind me what was this app again, right? And then, then he tells me, and then my next action then is to, to download the app or maybe there's even more steps. But what I need to do is capture the project uh, is, is uh, you know, for example, in this case, it might be install a cool app that Nicholas told me about or install the cool productivity app. So, so what you need to do there is, is to decide what is the next, uh, what's the desired outcome of this. And then you also have the next action. And this is what we call in the GTD, the outcome and next action thinking. Like, where are we going? And which way should we start walking to? So I'll, I'll come back to it a little bit later as well, talk about it. So example, um, clarify. So you have these um, um, uh, lists probably, but probably some, some of you created. And um, this is what a lot of people, you know, create lists for is, is wrote the, the, these things down. What's the problem with these to-do lists are? is that uh, this is an incomplete list of unclear stuff. So you know that not everything that you need to do is on this list, plus it's not uh, clear what it is. So for example, like the first example, there's mom here. So I imagine most of us have this, you know, or if, if you have lucky to have mom or mother still around, right? We have something like this there, or maybe father or whatever. It's just a name, but it's, it's only like actually a fact that everybody, everybody else can share. So it doesn't tell you anything about it. What you need to do is why is mom in my head or my mom in my mind? What do I need to do about it? Um, yeah, when is another question? So bank in same way. So what we need to do with the clarify then is to uh, uh, actually take these, uh, break this down and have a project. So it's actually mom's birthday is coming up and we want to do mom's birthday. So that's why mom is on our head. So we said like, we have a project to give mom a birthday party. And then the next action is call Anne, our sister regarding mom's birthday party. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, uh, that's kind of a way how we actually get to a uh, doable uh, and actionable uh, ne next actions list or, or what we call next actions list rather than to-do list. So another example here, so we have this fourth item ad campaign and we said like, we want to launch ad campaign for our awesome new prototype uh, thing that you'll, you'll come out from this uh, prototype uh, event from. And then uh, the next action is to email Jim to set up an ad campaign meeting or you know whatever talk or maybe to brainstorm with yourself uh, is, is something you do. So one is a project, another is next action. So project is another way of thinking about it. It's a definition of done. So what does done look like? 
And uh, then the next action is what doing looks, uh, so one is what do, done looks like, and the other one is what doing looks like. So what do I need to do next in order to start moving towards that goal? So actually, let's uh, let's have some uh, more fun and uh, clarify some things out of your mind suite together. So um, probably best if you can open a microphone and give one item from your list that you're happy to share with the group or, or put in front of the group. And let's let's walk through this together and see what we can do there. So who's... Uh, because I, I don't want to use chat because then I need to ask you questions and, and get your answers like uh, in more things. So who's the brave one? Wants to share something from there. Uh, Was it that we need to name the task? Yes, from that's the, you wrote the, down the, from your the first task was uh, uh, write uh, tasks. Write tasks. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, what's, what's the desired outcome there? Write all the tasks down that you need to do? Yes, basically, the outcome is a list of we start. Okay, write the list of tasks. Okay, great. So, uh, so or, uh, or maybe let's put it this way uh, the outcome better would be uh, to have a full list of uh, tasks that I need to do. Right, so this is the definition done. Then um, yep. maybe the okay first question we know what it is. Then the question is, is it actionable for you? Yes. So we have five minutes in five minutes, so they could be added in yeah. five. Minutes. Well, let's let's say let's say that this is maybe you know something you want to do afterwards. So so let's let's just play with this example. So the question is, what's the next action then? Start writing. Yeah, probably. Yeah. If I'm programmist, then I would do this play. Yes. Yeah, yeah, start writing. <laughs> so, okay, can you do it right away? Uh, I guess it doesn't take less than two minutes to write everything down that you need to do. Uh, in, in your case, it was five minutes. So, no. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, for example, if you write it down, write, want to write down everything that you need to do, then it's probably less no, then it's more not, than not possible. So, I need to save probably some time yeah. uh, in my calendar for that. Yeah, yeah. So obviously you can't delegate it because the things are in your head, right? It's not on everybody else's head. So you defer it and you write down like, you know, do a full mind sweep, for example. And, you know, for example, we have uh, this kind of cards that, that kind of a trigger list of help you think about those things. So, uh, yeah, so, so you have a project, which is uh, have a full list of tasks to do. And you have a next action, which is kind of find time to, to write everything down. So that's one example. Okay, yep. thanks. Any, uh, do, uh, okay, let's see if anybody else has an example they want to bring. I have. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so my first list of thing was find my key or somehow open my door. I just lost my door key. Okay. So, so <laughs> I imagine you don't need to do it right away. So you're, you're, or are you in the corridor at the moment or? <laughs> uh, so everything is closed, but luckily, I have a very close friend in my same apartment house, so she could let me in, and I'm on her PC to join this Protron workshop. Uh -huh, uh, that's right. That's why you are under Yuri's name. So <laughs> uh, that's that's my real name. I'm from Japan, so Yuri means. Oh, oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, so oh, I'm not okay. a man. Thanks for verifying yeah. that. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Yeah. That's 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 a you know Russian name. I know. Me. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So did, I mean, is it still a thing that you want to do anything about or did you manage to complete this one? Uh, so right now it wasn't actionable because I need to be on this workshop. Uh -huh. After this workshop, yes, there are something I can do. For example, go back to the shop that I went to during the daytime so I can look for the key on the ground mm -hmm. and if I can't find, then the next step is to telephone my landlord to see if the landlord has a spare key and ask the landlord if I should change the door key or just use the spare key. Mm -hmm. The third option, if the landlord is not reachable somehow, then I will get the assistance from this company called uh, Lucky Abbey or mm -hmm. Lucky Abbey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and see if I can somehow have them open my door or if they should somehow, you know, kind of break the door, door frame or something and just yeah. physically unlock it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So basically the, the project here is here is get back into my home or, or wherever you live, right? And yes. the next action is going back to the store. 
So in that case, you brought them examples of like the next steps, uh, not the next step, but the, the steps after that, right, as well. So which is which is fine in this example. Uh, but what we usually recommend is is not necessarily need to write down everything because uh, you know something might happen. For example, in your case, it might be that um, that uh, you you go to the shop and and then the some the person in the shop says like, oh yeah, the, our manager found it and uh, they, they took it to the kind of the key desk, right? So so if you would be Feeling following your list right away and said like okay there was nothing in the store so I go to the, my landlord rather but but then something changed and mm -hmm. need to go somewhere else to pick up your key so obviously it depends on the project but uh, but a lot of the times it's it's kind of useful just to write down the maybe first thing then the roughly what you will do otherwise but but do not plan out like everything it's it's that's very it's this one is more agile approach right so so you you kind of you're ready for for any kind of changes that might come up but but yeah um, thanks or ho hopefully you'll, you'll find the key. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So uh, maybe let's take one more uh, example. Maybe something more kind of, you know, nebulous or or what's not not clear for you. Some keywords from somebody else. I have key targets and priorities. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, you you have to have. Sorry, can I say that again? Uh, in my list, I have. Uh, you try to track or tracking uh, priorities and targets. Okay, okay. So, um, so basically, what is it? Is it is it kind of setting up uh, priorities and targets uh, system, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, you have to focus on on things what are important for you at, at the current moment or, or important to uh, to reach the goal. Mm -hmm. So, is it is it actionable? Yes. Yes. So what, what, what do you think? What's the next action for you? Execute. <laughs> Execute. Well, that's, that's, uh, that's actually, that's the thing. The problem is it's, it's not really a next action, right? Because you, you don't know, if I say execute you, you don't know what actually you, you would be doing. So, uh, so that's the kind of thing what we recommend to, so you can visualize yourself actually doing that, right? It might be like you're sitting behind a computer and typing something, but, but you actually know what, you know, what you're typing there. So what do you think might be the next action is? For you. In that case, to write down uh, the actual action or activity, what has mm -hmm. to be uh, accomplished. Okay, so I imagine probably, yeah, that's that's a uh, th thanks for bringing up uh, this this tough one. It's uh, yeah, maybe maybe you write down all the targets that you want to achieve. So maybe the first step. Okay. Right? One of the targets uh, for everyone uh, in the group is uh, to do a homework, for example, right? So, to uh, to to uh, to fill in Excel uh, sheet for the market fit, for example. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So you write that, write that down. Uh, you can probably not do it just right now because you're in the meeting. Sometimes I've had people like, hey, we go to this three step and then like, you know, what's the next step? And they drop off, right? Because they went to do that. Uh, probably something that you need to do yourself. You can't delegate it, but then uh, you'll, you'll defer it. You'll put the write down your list that write down all the targets and what have you there. And then the project is having this target list completed or, you know, ready to be executed or what have you. So, okay, I hope you get a um, uh, kind of idea how, the, how that works uh, going through these five questions. Of what is it? Is it actionable? If no, what should I do with it? Uh, if yes, what's the next action? So that's really important point here. And uh, then uh, ask yourself if there is a project uh, that that actually need to define an outcome. Because some of times you know, you know, like buy cat food is relatively simple. Like you you go to the corner store, buy the cat food, and that that you're done with it. There is no project involved usually in something like this. But some of the other things you need to do a project with. So uh, some kind of uh, best practices from here. Uh, first of all, two minute rule. So uh, when you run, uh, get into something that you know uh, you're gonna, you can finish it, the next action in two minutes and do it right away. This is uh, very helpful to get this thing out of your life, first of all, and then you're, you're more like action biased, uh, I would say it's, it's greatest. For example, you know, um, I'll, I'll walk around in my apartment and I notice one of, uh, you know, the lights is out. I need to change the bulb, right? I look at this like, oh yeah, I know where the bulbs are. I have that kind of bulbs. Uh, I just recently bought them. So uh, rather than you know walk around and five or ten more times and thinking about I need to change the bulb, I just take the two minutes and, and change it right away. Obviously, you know if if I'm if I'm late for the meeting or something like that, I won't do that. But if I have the two minutes, then I'll go and do it right away. 
So, so that's that's very helpful uh, rule to follow. I think if if nothing else, you know, take this away from from your life because handling it later on and even in our process, organizing and reflecting and and, and engaging later on will take you more than two minutes. So, so it's kind of efficiency cut off point. And obviously, as well, what we recommend to do when when clarifying, for example, your inbox, try to get to the zero, right? So, so it's it's very very helpful, and and I'll talk um, about it a little bit more later. So, uh, worst practices. Uh, so, I don't know. A question: Did you find value out of this? Uh, is it, was was it valuable for you to know this? Now, thumbs up. Yes. No. <laughs> Yeah, okay, for Alex, I can see at least, yeah, and uh, Indo as well, thank you. So, um, and actually it's funny because, uh, because uh, nothing has changed in your world, right? You, 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 none of you did those things, uh, but uh, what, what changed is how you engage with your world. So now you know exactly what do I need to do about that thing. So, so it's, it's, uh, it's clearer for me now. So that's kind of the, one of the magics of, of GTD. So uh, the worst practice is uh, decide on things when they blow up. Right, so it might be that uh, you know email comes in and like ah oh, I don't want to deal with it I don't want to decide what I want to do it it's not that uh, you need to do it but but that you need to decide it's it's the key here so you decide things when they blow up right when 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 it's really late or you know maybe maybe at uh, this this uh, lamp example is is that's actually the lamp in my bathroom at night <laughs> next time I go there at night you know it's like I can't see anything and then I need to kind of change the start changing the lamp light there in the, in the middle of the night rather in the evening when I'm a little bit more fresh and, and kind of you know don't want to sleep so and the best practice is decide when things show up like make a decision about it what do I need to do about it it's not that you do it right away but you have a decision made and you have the next actions and, and the uh, desired outcomes captured so okay the next steps will go a little bit faster uh, because uh, because we're not doing any practices there. So the third one is. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, your microphone is open. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, so the third step is uh, is uh, organize. Um, the process continues. Put it where it belongs. So in, in the kitchen example, it was like when we decide something is trash or something is like a clean dish, we'll, we'll put it in the right place. Uh, so it's not uh, enough to only to capture and clarify things. So you need to uh, park the things in appropriate categories where their meaning matches their location. So for example, you know, in the kitchen example, you know, you have uh, your, all your clean dishes in, in your cupboard, right? So uh, that, that's where the clean dishes go. So, so their meaning uh, matches the location, right? Uh, this is clean dish and this belongs in the clean dish cupboard. So the practical examples we have here is so this is, these are not uh, specifically a list, but uh, rather huge categories that we have. First one is this projects list. So this is all the bigger outcomes that you want to achieve. A few more words about projects. So these are, as I said, this is a thing that takes one, more than one action uh, to do. It might be no, separate kind of actions. So, so for example, going by a cat's food might be one action because even if it takes you putting on the coat, getting into the car, driving to the store, getting in and so and coming back, you know, like physically, there's a lot of actions, but but for you conceptually, it's like one action. You know, it's something to do that, but uh, but something that you know probably need to do in, in two what we call two sittings or in two two uh, uh, kind of uh, etap. <laughs> Just forgot the English word right now. In two stages, uh, so so you capture all your projects there. Uh, the time uh, cutoff point is like one year if it's something that takes less than a year to achieve. Then it goes into the projects list, <clears throat> and you define it as a desired outcome. Then obviously, if there's something you need to do and it's uh, time and, and uh, specific, uh, then it goes to your calendar, right? For example, this meeting was in your calendar because it's time specific. So that's where you find these kind of things. Um, then uh, if it's not time specific, then it goes to the next actions lists and uh, you, you'll have several lists there and, and I can talk about a little bit later about that. So these are things that are not time specific. You will do whenever you want, uh, you need to, to do or, or whenever you have time to do those. And there might be like urgency related to that, but but you know there are a lot of stuff that you feel urgent, but actually doesn't really happen. Nothing bad happens if it goes a little bit later, or or it doesn't kind of you know. For example, you you can't have this meeting with me uh, in in two hours time because then it's over. But but you can do something else, uh, right? Even if it's really critical, maybe more more important than this one here. So uh, next actions list is where you put all those uh, deferred items uh, from your next actions. And uh, fourth one is really useful is waiting for list. So waiting for a list is stuff that you have delegated to other people. 
that you're waiting for other people to come back to you uh, about. So keeping track of those things is, is really useful, really powerful. And once people figure that one out, uh, things really start happening, <laughs> especially if, if the people work for you or if you work with them and they realize that, that uh, if, if you delegate something to them and you'll, you'll come back to it about it later on a consistent basis, then uh, they, they, will, uh, they will act differently than otherwise would. So, so that's a, definitely something I've explored. So these are all the actionable items. These are uh, the projects uh, and the next actions and, and the delegated actions, uh, which we go to the waiting for list. So uh, non-actionable site as well. So let's cover this as well. So obviously there is trash, things you throw away, uh, emails you delete, etc. Then there's reference folder. Um, you can set up a separate in digital world. Uh, you can set up separate folders for your emails or, or, or your files somewhere. Obviously the search in Gmail is, I mean, everywhere else usually is quite good these days. So you can also search them without creating this uh, structure. It's up to you, but, but somewhere a place where you know you can find them. And then great is this someday maybe list. So this is the incubate I mentioned before. So these are might be uh, you know like your dreams and and, and, and uh, aspirations, but it might be also things that are not actionable right now. Something you want to do later. Uh, so potential projects and actions, uh, and uh, but not now. So uh, we, you can also call it parking lot or or bucket list uh, as well. You know, but something maybe is probably the best best kind of phrase for that. So when it comes to organizing, um, the worst practice is uh, having uh, blended stacks. So you have your next actions and you have your references and you have your trash and you have your uh, someday maybe it's all in one list. So it's gonna be really hard for you to find them. And then you go numb to it because then it's like, huh? And like, you know, it's like, you know, because I don't know what's there or I can't find what I need to find in there. So this is, this is definitely uh, uh, the best worst practice and, and something to avoid to have like, uh, uh, to do, but rather you should have clear categories uh, and what they help you with is they help you make decisions and move forward. So for example, while something might be next action calls list, like if you're in a moment that you need, you're ready to like call people, et cetera, then, then you go to the list and start like you calling one people one by one who have you there. Or for example, you are in your grocery list. So if you, if you go to a grocery store, then you don't want to see the next actions that you need to do behind when you're in office behind your computer, right? That's, that's actually uh, not helpful uh, at all. So, or vice versa, you don't want to see in office the things that you need to buy in grocery store. You just need to know that you go to the grocery store and then you look at the grocery store list there. So basically have those clear categories and have those, uh, all those next actions uh, sorted by, by, by those. So this will help you make decisions and move forward. Okay, so uh, fourth step. Uh, another quite unique uh, feature of, of uh, GDD system is reflect. And I, I call it actually a kind of a cornerstone of, of keeping it going. So if anybody has tried with that uh, is, is something uh, you might be have struggled with is usually like the hardest thing to do is, is establish a reflect step. So basically this is stepping back regularly and, and looking uh, at, at all, of, all of your GTD system or, or your task system. Uh, do it on a daily basis. So for example, in the morning, you'll wake up and see uh, what meetings do I have in my calendar? Where do I need to be when? And then also maybe look all of the today's actions or, or my action list and maybe big stuff there that I want to get uh, done today. Most important though, is you need to do a weekly review. So weekly review is uh, looking at all of your system uh, once a week. So besides of kind of uh, keeping the system fresh, you'll actually eliminate stuff that you already done Maybe people you are waiting for list, but people have answered you, so you can take those off. Uh, but then also it kind of triggers you like, okay, wait, yeah, I waited for that. Now I need to do a next action. So you add things to the next action. But it's also about getting a higher perspective on your work and life. So, so that, that's actually executive thinking, uh, even if you're not executive. Well, you actually are executive. You're executive of your life, right? So stepping back and uh, taking time for this executive thinking like, okay, well, I have these 40 projects on my list, right? So uh, no way I can move all of those forward in the next week, uh, which, which, which five of those or 10 of those are, are the most important ones, which I should focus on. So have this kind of strategic thinking about your work and life is, is really, really important. So uh, the worst practice uh, is uh, so that you are, if you're not reflecting, uh, you're reacting to the latest and loudest. Something that just walked in from the door right now. And it's like, ah, oh, yeah, like, you know, it's like, oh, this thing is like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do this. You know, it's like, I don't know what to do, but just this screams quite loud, loud so, so I'll do this. If this is what you do when you do, don't do reflect and review consistently. 
and uh, the best practice is then utilizing those orienting views that you that you go through in the reflect phase and decide like uh, well oh yeah okay uh, something really kind of apparently important came in but you know i can put this thing on hold because the, whatever i decided to do is this is more important you know you probably have those homework tasks to do right and 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 then then you know you need to uh, decide with whatever else kind of arrived in your inbox or whatever arrived in your world and decide between those so best uh, practice is to have those appropriate reviews consistently uh, and uh, decide how you use your time and resources. Okay, so uh, finally, we will start doing things, right? So it's getting things done. <laughs> That's the final step. And there's a reason for that, right? Because you need to do those previous steps before you get here. Uh, all those four, first, uh, the fourth step, which is uh, capture, clarify, organize, and, and reflect. And what do you do here is basically you, you're looking at your next actions list. You're looking at a list uh, which is appropriate to the place where you are. It could be a physical place, but it could be a mental place as well, right? It's like, hey, this is focus time. You have maybe blocked out your calendar. This is focus time for doing really big projects. So you might have your own custom list called really big projects uh, or something like that. Or you might be like, uh, you know, it's what is it? Uh, it's right now, it's five. So it's uh, 10 minutes to four o'clock uh, on Wednesday, April 28th. So I have 10 minutes, uh, then this uh, presentation about getting things done starts. Uh, do I have anything on my list that I can do in 10 minutes? And maybe there, you have a specialist that like five minute task, right? I was like, oh yeah, email, you know, uh, mom about like uh, that you'll visit her on the weekend, right? It's like, you, you'll go to the list, you'll, you'll, you'll get it done. And even in this 10 minutes when otherwise you're like, oh, I don't know what to do, there's so little time. You can, you can actually uh, do something. So, so this, is, this is what you, uh, uh, what you do, there are some, uh, there are worst and best practices there. So the worst practice obviously is, is uh, not looking at your list, but be run by the business of life, which means that you're not uh, feeling good what you're doing. And you're, you're not feeling good about what you're doing, not because what you're doing, but because what you're not doing. So, so this David Allen has a really nice, a uh, lot of right sayings. Uh, you know, we started the, the mind is for having ideas, not holding them. But this one I like really most, which he says like, you can, feel good about things that you're not doing when you know what you're not doing. So when you have full overview of all the stuff that you do, because if you have the full overview, then you can look at the list and, and obviously there's additional steps that you need to do there. But in, in some, you can make a priority decision. What's the best thing to do right here, right now? So, and when you have that one, then this is actually where the stress reduction comes in because at that moment, you know that you're doing the right thing. So yeah, so worst practice is being in the busy trap. So like, oh, like I need to do this, I need to do that, I have all these things to do, and, and, and you're doing that. You're doing actually things, maybe not the right things, because, and then you're not feeling good about that either. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, the best practice is making a drastic choice uh, of, of uh, the, the, this thing that I'm doing right now, this is the best thing that I can do in this moment, in this time. So this is how, uh, what, how, to, how to kind of engage with the engage step. So yeah, so, um, these five steps, capture, clarify, organize, reflect, and engage is, uh, is how it works. And, and uh, it's actually, I mentioned earlier that it has applicability regardless of the situation. And you can actually start uh, you know, uh, teaching this to, to your kids, if you have kids, or once you, are, once you have kids, or your grandkids, uh, is, uh, is you can already start about like four or five year old. Uh, actually, it's a funny thing. Uh, and uh, usually what the situation they run into is that their room is a mess, right? So, so then uh, you can use the GTD method to, to, to make that room playable again. And what you start, you start with capture, you, you know, this is something you can use. You can take a big bucket or, or, or box or something like that. And you take everything that's on the floor and put it in the box. And this is the capture step, right? Then you take all the items one by one and clarify what they are. So this is a toy, this goes in the toy box. This is book, this goes on the bookshelf. This is, a, this is a mom's mobile phone, <laughs> so that goes back to mom. And this is, a, this is a, you know, a clothes that, that needs to washing, right? So, and you put everything in the right place, uh, you clarify and you organize. Then a step back, look like, is the room playable? Is it okay? And then uh, you as a four or five year old, they, they can start engaging again, which means playing, you know, taking, taking the dice that they want to play from the shelf and, and start playing with those. Or you can use it uh, in, in your uh, situation where you are at the moment of, of kind of capturing out the ideas that you have uh, that you need to do clarify what exactly did they mean uh, to them putting in the right list, uh, stepping back and kind of reflecting the whole system 
is okay what's what's kind of my priorities here and then then start engaging and you can take it to the to the you know uh, uh, big corporation executive uh, level who kind of uh, captures the idea that maybe I need to acquire my uh, competitor or maybe I need to acquire this new startup at, uh, at, and then figure out how much money do I need to pay for that. So potential exit strategy for you. Okay, so uh, I don't know, I hopefully you got uh, the GTDQ link from Jana as well. Did you? Yes, would be interesting to hear. So uh, Neme, I hope he's still on my colleague on the line. Uh, yeah, Neme put it in the in the chat. Uh, the kind of what was your GTDQ score if you did it? So if, if you didn't do it, uh, don't need to go to. I'll, I'll talk, walk walk it through, but it would be interesting to know where where are you finding yourself right now. So there was a just a quick reminder. Uh, this this uh, uh, questionnaire kind of gave you a two by two matrix result, and uh, the the kind of the uh, one is uh, perspective, and another one is uh, control. So, uh, so basically, if you have very low uh, perspective and very low uh, control, then you are in the responder or in the victim uh, quadrant. Uh, so, uh, so that means basically you're kind of being pushed by the life around, right? So the stuff is coming at you, all you can do is kind of respond to it and, and you, you have very little kind of control over things and very little focus. So if you, if you gain some, uh, then we'll move to the next on the bottom. Uh, uh, if you gain some control, uh, but you don't have much uh, vision, then you become uh, what was that? implementer micromanager, right? So you are gonna, yeah, I got kind of stuff stuck in road. I don't know exactly what to do, right? But at least I know the things that all I have to do is here. And that's kind of the negative side might be a micromanager, like, you know, just, yeah, just tinkering all the time and like everything is right in the right place. So the kind of the opposite of that is, is a visionary. So you have like a vision uh, or you have perspective, but you don't have control. So you come up with an idea like, oh yeah, let's do this, let's do that. Uh, this is a great idea, etc. But it's very hard to put those into into implementation. So, but if you uh, manage to achieve uh, like the, the so-called golden position, which is the captain and commander autocrat, so both you have vision, you know where you're going, but you also have a control, so you can implement it. So this is this is what uh, GDDQ, and uh, it's this is not a personality test in a sense that it's kind of only uh, shows you where you are at that moment. And that will change, and it changes for me. I'm I'm not uh, sitting in the in the captain and commander uh, quadrant uh, all the time. For example, you know, on a sp being two hours in this meeting, just turning off my phone and then turning off my email, etc. It's kind of uh, probably once I come out of that, and then obviously this this uh, energy that I put here as well, it's kind of uh, lacking. So I'll, I'll be whatever is coming for me is like, oh, well, like I don't know, I can't handle it. After a while, I, I kind of re recover, and then I'll, I'll kind of start to putting the GTD steps into action, and I'll start moving towards the, uh, the captain and commander uh, quadrant again. Yeah, so uh, so yeah, that's that's uh, interesting to check out. And then the kind of, the, that's the main thing about GTD is not so much about um, being steady uh, on, on a steady place, but rather knowing how to get there. So as, as we have colleagues in India actually who have put together these, these really nice uh, visualizations, and this is the one I love most is, GTD is not about always being in your zone, uh, which is actually some, something that's possible with GTD, getting into the zone, the zone, uh, if you have heard about this. It's about having the speed uh, to get back on when you fall off. So, so this, this is natural, you fall off, uh, but uh, how do you get back there, speed and skill? And what we exemplify this with is, uh, is with the surfboard effect. So any, any surfers here? Anybody does surfing? Okay, Alex, oh yeah. So uh, I don't know, do, do you speak Estonian? No. No, okay, okay. Well, sorry, because, because I want to know how this thing is called is in Estonian. I know how it's called in English because I'm not a surfer myself. But the most important thing on the surfboard uh, here is what we want to talk about. So I have this uh, pointer here. It's actually this one here. If you can see, this is this, this uh, thin line goes, goes to the kind of connects him to the board. And this is called ankle tether. And why is that important? Is, as I said, uh, the GTD is not the perfect state, uh, being in the perfect state but the ability to get back on. So the ankle tether helps the surfer uh, when he falls off. So basically, you know, uh, sooner or later when you're surfing, you fall off your board, right? And then if you're not going to have an ankle tether, then it's going to be a mess. Your, your board might be like tens of meters away from you and need to swim there, etc. And Maybe there's currents involved. You might be lost your uh, board as well. But if you have the uh, ankle tether, then it's actually relatively easy to get back on because the board doesn't get away from you. And that's what GTD does. So it helps you get really uh, back on really quickly. Uh, uh, why? Uh, 
why is that important is, is because uh, when you have that, then you have the courage to take on a bigger wave. Because that's usually what's holding us back. It's like, you know, we have this thing like, hey, maybe I can do a little bit more, but you know, if I fail in that, that's gonna be a, like a big mess, right? But if you have this a way of getting back into that more productive states really easily, this is what gives you courage to, uh, to take on a bigger wave. Okay, so let me, oh, I can't turn that off anymore. So um, kind of um, wrapping up, but we'll have a question and answer session. So, uh, so kind of GTD will help you turn this uh, into um, this, mind like water, uh, being uh, properly engaged with your work and life, it's the end result. And just to kind of comment here, it's, it's kind of, you might say like, hey, Paul, yeah, this is a nice advertisement. You have this light wind, nice calm water here, but what about if somebody throws a rock in there? And what happens actually is, is the water uh, reacts very appropriately. It doesn't kind of, uh, when the water is coming, it, uh, the, the, oh, sorry, when the rock is coming, the water doesn't kind of freeze up or like, uh, like this or, or gets, gets like really nervous. It's just, you know, it, there's a plump and there's waves and then it kind of calms down again and it, it reacts appropriately. So that's, that's where we want to get as well, you know, being appropriately engaged with your work and life and not getting, uh, you know, worried about things that, that you can't do anything about or, or, or you know, um, not being uh, properly engaged. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of uh, my, my presentation. So I can answer questions and, and uh, uh, questions and, uh, and yeah, give answers to, to your questions. <laughs> uh, but also, uh, if, if interested, I can, I can maybe show you briefly as well uh, how to, for example, doing Gmail, how do, how do you get your inbox to zero a little bit more better? So um, if people are interested, but maybe let's see if, if there are any questions at the moment. Hmm. While you're thinking about it, I think Anzori already, or somebody asked about one question, so is what to do if different organizers, apps are already starting to need to organize themselves? So basically this is the question where I have so many apps and stuff where, where I have things captured, but there's so many, it's kind of overwhelming. So then, yeah, our recommendation is, is to have like a, as few apps as possible, like, and have a, one system and something we call the trusted system. So, so your mind will let the things go if, um, if it realizes that you have a trusted system uh, where things, so for example, not having a trusted system is like writing things down at, at night, but then your mind knows that you're never gonna look them again, right? Then, then this writing down is, is actually not that helpful. Uh, but, but if your mind knows that it's a trusted system that you look at it once a week or, or no, not sorry, once a week, <laughs> you'll review it once a week, but, but you look at it every day, something like that, then, then it will let go. So, so definitely choose one uh, tool and then go with it. The tool itself is not that important, actually. It's sometimes uh, what is what is thought about is 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 that uh, that yeah, if I find the perfect tool, I, I compare it uh, this to uh, like if you need to drive somewhere, right? If rather than walk, uh, I mean, if you need to tr uh, drive in a car somewhere, um, it's not important. So important. What kind of car do you have? It's important that you know how to drive, right? So so this. Learning about GTD is learning about those habits of, of you know, uh, these five steps plus additional things that we have there uh, and, and implementing those habits. And you can use it, you can do that with a paper list, a paper note base. A lot of people do that because that works better for them. They have a paper note base or, you know, can, you can do it in Gmail uh, or Google tasks, or you can do it in Trello. Somebody mentioned Trello already, or you can do it in Outlook. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the most important thing is, you know, how to do that. So, okay. Sorry, but uh, if you can choose, if you have different networks, different identities, and uh, every different network use different uh, um, tools, environments, mm -hmm. and you want or not, you must obey because you are a member of an active network. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, what, what I have done, so, so basically I have, a, I have my, uh, my own business and then I, have, I work in Microsoft, so obviously it's kind of complicated to take the Microsoft stuff out of that system. It's kind of uh, probably breaking some of the security rules there. So in that case, uh, I've, I've doing, uh, that I have you know, tasks on the Microsoft Outlook system, and then I have my own task on, on my Gmail system. Not, not most optimal. Uh, the reason I don't want to take my personal task to the Microsoft system is because I'm working there as a contractor. So it's, it's kind of time bounded. And after a while, you know, I'll, I'll, you know maybe I'll, I'll <laughs> give up that contract and, and you know, stop working for them. Then I need to kind of migrate everything outside of there as well. 
But uh, usually like if, if, if the rules allow you to take this information to put somewhere else, then I, I recommend to have like one system rather, rather than several systems because it's kind of, uh, it takes more complicated to do it. Um, so I don't know what systems you're talking about specifically, but there are uh, like, this is kind of a known problem <laughs> that mm -hmm. uh, companies are starting to address. And so there, there are a lot of different apps which are kind of aggregators. So like, Common things are email, calendars, to-do lists, Gantt charts, chats, stuff like that. And these, I mean, ClickUp is an example of one that combines a whole bunch of these different things. I mean, even Trello, you can get plugins that connect you to all different kinds of uh, other like emails and stuff like that. So I, I don't know, it's, it's not impossible to, to find yeah. a solution I mean that will, you know, combine all the stuff that you need yeah I, you know for for me example i think it's 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 not an issue actually what i realized also when i when i was a gtd practitioner who taught himself uh my, myself right so and then i did a lot of mistakes when i started becoming gtd trainer then i kind of uh, needed to relearn some of the stuff and it's actually the biggest learning was that the system doesn't really matter it's as long as, as uh, how you use it right so it's 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 kind of uh, you know, I'll, I'll, with the core example is like, uh, you know, I don't know if, if, if anybody knows Tallinn uh, geography, you know, if you start uh, driving from, from Birita to, to, to Lagri, for example, uh, then uh, it's, it's not so important if you're using a roller car, this mini car, or you're using a Ferrari, right? If you don't know how to drive, then you'll probably crash it before, before you get it in the city center even. Uh, so, so, but if, if you have a roller car, then it's you're much more powerful than, than just uh, walking, you know, something like that. So um, yeah, so different, uh, which app I'm using. So in Microsoft, I'm using Outlook uh, for, for my managing my system. In Gmail, there is uh, something called Active Inbox, which is gonna lay uh, in the browser, computer browser, uh, kind of uh, add-on, uh, which is kind of using, but uh, that's just my, what I started historically using. I like it, I know how to use it, but it's, it's not a strong recommendation. In GTD, we have, uh, when we do the training, then at the end of the training, we'll, we'll provide people with, uh, Instructions and you can actually go on uh, gettingthingsdone.com and you can buy yourself if, if you're really interested buying those instructions. Of how do you set up a GTD system in Trello, right? Because Trello doesn't uh, tell you how to set up a GTD system. That's that's something you need to kind of uh, uh, learn. So we have, we have these kind of instructions as well. Yeah, systems are the most important thing, but the, the, I think in, in GTD context, the most important system is the one is in your head. And then how do you, and the tool is just to help you make, make it re reality, but it, it doesn't. That's the big thing. I mean, there, there's five or 600, probably a thousand apps that tell them that you can do GTD with us, you know, but, but uh, they don't teach you how to do GTD. Some, some of them are pretty good, but it's still, if you don't know, you don't know those, these steps, then, then the, the tool doesn't work for you and you need to make this decision. And, and that's not something yep. you can, yeah, go ahead. Um, actually, another thing I was gonna suggest, so like uh, I usually have information overload as kind of a daily thing. So, um, there's a, a, this idea called building a second brain. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it, but it's, it's also a really interesting way of uh, systematizing how you organize your, your daily information. And um, I mean, like the, the premise is that you should never do the same work twice, yes. right? Yes. So how do you do that? Well, every time you, you make something or build something or have an idea, then you have to be able to catalog it, but you also have to be able to get it back again, right? So mm -hmm. all these ideas come together and, and you know help you to come up with a system. And yeah, th there's lots of great materials out there, but uh, yeah, GTD is like, it's good. It's, it's like a minimum. Yeah, so, so actually you, you mentioned the system, the second brain, uh, which is, uh, which is actually, I, I can't remember the guy's name. He had, uh, he's an American, but he has kind of a, I think it like Italian name, something like that. I'm, um, so, yeah, sorry. But, look him up. Yeah, but but he has this training, which is actually, it's a, kind of a GTD plus system, right? So it takes a GTD as a core, and then you kind of uh, builds on a little bit more uh, advanced reference system on top of it. This is like, maybe probably some, some other steps, some other things, but it's kind of uh, takes a GTD as a premise and then builds upon that. And actually the second brain is kind of the probably, I don't know, trademark thing, but this is what I would actually say as well. Having this trusted system, it's actually this, this, this uh, second brain of yours, which is then good at remembering and, uh, and uh, reminding you about things, right? Because that's what I said that the mind can do is remember, uh, remind consistently, but we can recognize. So you have this uh, cybernetic system actually, where, where part of you is out, outside of your head and, and kind of helping. Yeah. 
<laughs> Forte, that's his name, Tiago Forte. Tiago Forte, yes, yes, yeah. Well, it's uh, then it's more like a Spanish name, sorry. <laughs> yeah, thanks, thanks, yeah. thanks for bringing it up, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, so I, and I just want to say his course is really expensive, but you can learn a lot from the blog, and mm. yeah, all this stuff is great, everything. This is a great talk, thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, welcome. So yeah, so I mean, actually kind of use this as an opportunity, so so kind of talk about a little bit ourselves as well. So how we make money is, is uh, we, we're going to introduce this to, uh, to uh, you know, companies like this, for example, using GTD speech, but mainly we want to train people uh, learn GTD. So we have a GTD course. If you go getting things done.te, we have like an information there how to sign up the course. So it's not as expensive as Tiago Fortes, I think. <laughs> so so uh, it's more a little bit simple and then we'll take step by step. So that's that's an opportunity. But obviously, I mean, just to be uh, clear with you, you can you can pick up like I did, you can pick up uh, getting things done book and it's everything written down there and start implementing yourself. So, and then uh, even even better in like two years ago, they came out with a GTD workbook. So basically like a book where you just need to write in the book and like, hey, do these steps, steps, steps. And they have like, like not that much text on, on one page, but rather this kind of, so you can work, it's a workbook, right? So uh, I think that could be quite a feasible way of, of getting started with, uh, with GTD uh, as well. Uh, but obviously, yeah, if, if you want to go deep, if you want to get like, uh, understand everything because it's easy if you read yourself, you're gonna think, oh, this is not important, and you miss something, or you don't understand, and like make uh, mistakes. You you'll get a lot of productivity even out of there because you know that's what I did. But but you know what what happened since I started learning to become a trainer is is like next level. Then so it's, it's really awesome. Um, yeah. So what else? Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I have a question. So I also took this uh, GTDQ test. Mm -hmm. And I have a question, which is the best uh, sector or, or which is the best version according to, to this uh, system? Well, best one is to be in the captain and commander place, right? I mean, okay. they, they, they kind of, uh, they put in like this kind of more, how to say, uh, a Taoist approach that everything has its uh, light side and dark side. But mm -hmm. probably the best sector is to be in captain and commander. So you're not the responder or you're not the victim, right? So you're, you're, you are the one driving your life forward. So, okay. so yeah, yeah. But, it, yeah. but the main thing is that that uh, uh, the main thing is not so much about where you are or, or how do you get, how can you get there. So the GTD allows you to get from the other quadrants into the captain and commander quadrant, right? So you have like mm -hmm. a tool set of, of getting there. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So uh, yeah, if, just open your microphone, ask a question. I have like maybe a few more things to mention. Is um, what I personally benefited from GTD is, is uh, yeah, it's, it's something that even was uh, clear in hindsight, you know, that a lot of more opportunities started coming to, towards my way. And it kind of opened up for me to uh, actually get, get, make, make a space in my head. So I started eight years ago. After a while, I said like, hey, you know, I'm really not happy the way I'm exercising or actually not exercising at all. So I kind of found an exercising way of kind of explored some of the things and kind of had something system set up in my, in my life where, where I can exercise better, you know, and then, then I moved on to diet and I'm going to put my diet into the right place. And then after that, you know, I, I, I started doing meditation. So all of these kind of things that started coming, like, because suddenly there was like room for that, uh, thinking about those things and, and being, being aware of those things. So that's, that's kind of my personal experience um, and personal life. Maybe some thoughts about prioritizing things in GDT uh, mm -hmm. system. Yeah, so prioritizing. Uh, so uh, first of all, we have these kind of uh, models where, where you, first of all, you, you decide, uh, because the question is practical thing is like, what you can do right now, uh, right? So then the question is like, uh, uh, where am I right now? And it might be physical space, it might be like also mental space, right? If it's, if it's, uh, if it's like uh, six o'clock in the evening, you're pretty burned through, uh, but you still want to do something, you might be doing some mindless stuff, like just adding some numbers into Excel sheet or whatever, something like that, rather than making a big decisions. Um, or, you know, you're, as I said, I brought the grocery store example. In. Then it's how much time do you have? Uh, it's also an important question of choosing what to do next. Then we have something called uh, horizons of focus, uh, which is a little more advanced stuff that's written up in the book is, is uh, where you're gonna have, uh, start coming uh, down uh, uh, one way is looking at what's your purpose? Why, why are you in the world? Why are you, what are you trying to do? Then going down there, which are, what are your vision? What, what do you want to achieve? And et cetera. So, 
And these will help you kind of, uh, if, if you like look at the task and say like, okay, what's the more important see if, if that has an applica applicability on my vision level rather, or maybe it's, you know, if it's a cat food, right? <laughs> then it's, then it's probably doesn't have applicability of, uh, of my uh, perfect life vision. But if it's, uh, you know, creating, uh, creating some, some new tool or, or, or uh, it's, it's much more. So th there are some complex uh, theories there, but we, uh, what we don't do is kind of uh, add, adding like ABC uh, priorities because these actually don't work, you know, because uh, after a while, because the priorities change uh, from moment to moment as well. And this is something we call like tyranny of pa your past self, right? Your, your past self uh, wrote down like, hey, tomorrow I'm going to do those things, five things, come hell or high water, right? And then actually the hell and high water comes and then, you know, you're totally interrupted in your life, something else come in. And if you're not agilely, uh, adapting to that situation of reprioritizing back then, uh, then that wouldn't work. But if you're looking at the decisions that you made like uh, yesterday or maybe even a year ago, right? If this is something that, you know, the, uh, the one of the, the version of you, which was one year dumber than you are right now is making decisions for you. And this is something uh, to avoid rather than just putting on the list and then uh, decide on the spot using, using those different methods. So yeah. thanks for the question. I saw one question. Yes. If possible. Uh, there are also other disciplines, let's say, uh, there are four disciplines of uh, execution methodology. There is OKR, like objective and critical results. Mm -hmm. Can you please uh, bring uh, some parallels or maybe you can uh, bring out or highlight some, uh, some differences uh, like pros and, and, and cons of uh, of uh, GDT and and others. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm I'm not that much an expert on those other things, so it's going to maybe a little bit unfair uh, to to compare those. I think nobody. Uh, one big difference is maybe are that the GTD also starts where where you are, not where you should be. Right. This is actually saying like what's 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 has your attention right now, not not what goals do you want to achieve, and, and ignoring that. But rather going like let's let's write those down, and also starting from the ground level, we'll write the next actions. And we'll get the we'll get the cat his damn cat food right. So we, we don't ignore that, although it's kind of like really low priorities in your in your life scene, right? So so that's maybe one big difference that it it's kind of tackles also the the very practical uh, steps that you need to do. Uh, with OKRs, I think that's uh, that's that's not a competitive system. It's just uh, maybe OKRs is like the goals that you need to achieve, and the GDD is the way how do you get there, right? So what's what's the desired outcome? What's the next action? Uh, thinking. So it's just kind of uh, complementary, I would say. And uh, for example, GTD is very, uh, I, I've seen a lot of parallels between GTD and Scrum, for example, or Agile system in general, because uh, you, you'll, you'll do very similar kind of steps uh, as a team in, in Scrum that you do in, in, in uh, GTD, for example, you, you capture, meaning writing down all the user stories, what are the features that we want to do, then, uh, then clarifying is probably breaking down those to developable items, right? And then uh, you'll have the retrospectives, which is kind of the reflect step, and then planning sessions, which is kind of also a uh, next step. So it's kind of does the same thing for individual uh, GTD in GTD as the Scrum does on the on the team level. Thank you. Okay. Yep. Uh, you have done this uh, for years. Uh, how does your schedule or process look like uh, in real world? Do you have any examples to show how you organize your time or? Yeah, so I, I usually I'll only put calendars that, that needs to be there on time. So I mean, some people do different. Some people block out time, uh, for example, on some specific task. That doesn't really work for me. I I, I don't trust my previous self that much. <laughs> that, that, that the yesterday self who put this on the calendar. I'll do weekly review. Uh, my weekly review is usually two hours plus because I have quite a lot of stuff in the system. I think uh, that's that's very hard to start going, but. Uh, the, but it takes just sitting down two hours. I do that on Sundays, you know, so, so it's gonna, then, then nothing really is coming in new into my world and I can focus on this and make decision for the, for the week coming up. Uh, it lot of, it might feel like, ooh, two hours every Sunday or whatever, even Fridays, it's a lot of time. It's actually a great time investment because I get like probably four or five hours uh, back the next week because I've kind of uh, looked over the system and I'm gonna make my decisions on the, on the way, so. That's thing, and then obviously at the start of the day or uh, uh, and the previous night, I look at what's coming tomorrow. Uh, what do I want to focus on tomorrow? So I kind of uh, try to make a kind of list of that. It's not probably best practice. It's something I'll, 
I tried to avoid, but but one challenge that I have is, and, and actually it's like maybe it's uh, you 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 put out your numbers, I put out my numbers. Um, uh, you had some twenty thousand emails or whoever uh, different numbers there. I have I looked it up uh, between the so I have my personal system, you know, where's all my personal life uh, things involved. Then I have uh, the system for my GDD Estonia work, and then uh, the system for my Microsoft work, and which is kind of ah uh, like three systems too much already, but it's. Uh, probably can't do much about it. Between those things, I have about 350 next actions. Uh, don't not have so much waiting for us. So people really respond me quickly these days. Uh, I have uh, about 100 and maybe 80 projects. And then I have about 300 uh, Sunday maybes. So I have about eight, almost 800 uh, items in my system. And it was like, oh, that's crazy. Like, I don't want to have this. But the thing is, these 800 things are in my system, not in my head, right? So, so when I'm in this moment, I'm, I'm not thinking about those things because I know once I'm over, once I have focus, I'll, I'll go back to those things and then just can be here focus on these things. So, so, um, so that's why it's kind of a, also gonna usually week review gonna prioritize, okay, what, what I think I can realistically do next week. I'll usually overshoot uh, because new things come in, but, but I'll, I'll get a lot of done and, and then feel good doing about it. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, what else? So I mean, obviously, one one recommendation, or maybe thinking for you, is obviously I recommend uh, start uh, trying these things. You know, you have the book. You can you can go on a website and kind of uh, try to do it on yourself. Uh, just keep re uh, writing things down, for example. Obviously, if if you are successful and and your project kicks off, you need to hire more people. My recommendation is to have other people's uh, you know. Uh, learn about this as well, even if they don't start doing it, but they are aware of it. That's kind of really frustrating is sometimes it's like, uh, uh, you know, being a GTD practitioner, loan practitioner is like <laughs> everybody around you is, seems kind of, you know, they suddenly go slow or, or they are kind of, their behavior is inexplicable, you know, it's like uh, they, you, you talked something about them last week and you looked at the list like, oh yeah, this is something I talked with this person about today. It's like, what? Yeah, I don't remember anything. Yeah, because I didn't write it down. And they don't say that, obviously. They didn't write it down and then I forgot about it or something like that. So so, uh, so this is uh, this is something really useful in, in, in an organizational setting to have of people around you being aware of that as well. And I said, waiting for a list is very powerful if you're executive, because if you're, for example, you're executive, you have one-on-one -on -one meeting with your with your people, and say like, okay, I'll delegate these things to you to do, right? How are these things going on, right? After two or three meetings like this, you know, you can see like stuff start happening quite quickly, or maybe they come back to you and said like, hey, sorry, you know, I know that that I agreed to do that, but uh, something else came up and, and I needed to reprioritize. So this is not happening. So then you know, you can change your plans. Maybe you can delegate it to somebody else or, or you know, just say like, oh, this is, this is not urgent either. So let's put it on Sunday maybe, and let's come back to it in, in two, two months, right? So, but you are more clear uh, between those people what, what you need to do, et cetera. So, so that's something definitely keep in mind of, of, of uh, uh, you know, learning yourself to, to do it and then adding to your people to do it. We, we have done uh, kind of a, uh, so basically, and by we, I mean uh, GDD uh, licensees, so different companies who do it in different countries. Uh, and we are relatively new, but there you have companies in, in uh, US obviously and, and, uh, and all over the world uh, and Europe, uh, Scandinavia, Poland, uh, Germany, etc., Netherlands, UK. So they've done the kind of research of, of asking people, uh, what do you think, uh, what's the productivity increase? Uh, and people, the average one uh, is 15% productivity increase. So, uh, which doesn't might sound that much, but if you, if you put it on the uh, month, uh, yearly context, 15% uh, is two months. So that could either mean that uh, in, in whatever, 11 months uh, or in 12 months, you can do work, 14 months work, but you, know, you might want to deduct the vacation time as well or, uh, and, and get more paid for that, or uh, you, you're gonna work uh, nine months a year, right? Rather than, rather than 11 uh, to achieve the same results. And so it's up to you. But obviously some people have much bigger uh, changes, you know, uh, and, and it might be 50%, 100% yeah, productivity increase because they're really stuck with something. So they, if they get unstuck, they, their productivity increases. 85% um, participants who kind of uh, have implemented GTD reported that they are happier in their life, obviously, because there's less, uh, there's not less to worry about, but they, but, uh, they, they, they realize that, yeah, in, in that sense that they know what they need to worry about. And it's like, ah, that's not really worth it. So, so they don't worry about it. 70% uh, report having lower stress, and that's definitely true. And then what are really important, 70% can switch off from work, uh, meaning that, you know, 
it's not that you go home and you're with your partner or your kids or with your hobby, whatever, but you still keep thinking about your work, right? Because like, oh, I didn't finish this and what I'm gonna do, et cetera. But if you're already gonna kind of manage the system, then, then it's uh, possible to, to switch off. Definitely uh, avoid, so I know this one topic is gonna be about burnout uh, that you're gonna have this week, uh, Jana told me about. So you know, it definitely helps you avoid burnout because it's, uh, it's, you'll, you'll be more aware of what's on your plate uh, and, and how much you get to do. And, and maybe even more aware of yourself of what, how you're doing. So this is this is definitely avoids. Obviously, there are other reasons for burnout as well, which doesn't actually doesn't solve all of them, but most of them, when it comes to the amount of work, is is, is solved by by GTD. So um, I don't know. I I can also show you the kind of uh, really quick steps of how to get your email a little bit clearer. Is that something you would like to see? Okay. So yes. uh, I'll, I'll have a, okay, and I hope you can see my Gmail right now, right? Yes. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take it as a yes, because I'm sharing that screen <laughs> where I have. So this is, a, this is not my personal account. This is an example account that I have set up. So um, I don't have that many emails here, 152. So, uh, but uh, maybe the main kind of uh, point about talking about why, why do you need to get the in email the inbox into zero? The main thing is that it takes much less energy to maintain e uh, inbox at zero than it takes it from whatever, 100 or 10,000 or 15,000. And why is that? It's because you're not looking at the stuff that you're already taken care of or, or you know, you, you can't do that at the moment. You, you either you have uh, put it away uh, in, in the trash it or reference it, or you put it into your uh, next action system. So uh, that's one thing. It, it takes less energy to do that. The other thing is uh, you'll be ready for anything. So, so if, if you added inbox, et cetera, coming in, then it's like, oh, I need to take these, these things. And then an email comes in like, hey, we want to talk with you about investing in you, right? So then it might be actually, <laughs> might get lost in, in these kind of items or you don't notice it right away. But uh, when, when you have inbox zero, it's like one email. Oh, this is my focus, full focus is on that email. Like, yeah, I can, I can respond to that right away. So these are like a few, few reasons. So kind of really quick things is obviously, I mean, Gmail, it doesn't actually, you don't need to keep your emails in, in, in your inbox. Uh, really quick kind of uh, background on how Gmail works is Gmail doesn't actually have a folders, right? It rather has a tagging system. So the reason that you have your email in your inbox is that they have a tag called inbox on them. So, uh, so they're as quickly ac accessible to you by search as, as, as if they would be, uh, if they're not in your inbox. I mean, if they're not in inbox, oh, then they are. It doesn't really matter. If you search, you'll find out as quickly as possible. So kind of the idea here is obviously to remove the inbox tag from the messages that are not worthy of it. Um, one really quick tip is, is actually, um, uh, so let me see, I'll open up. I figured out this, this little hack. So uh, if you're in this view and you're searching, you really can search like show me the emails that before that date or something like that. But what you can do is you can put the size greater than one uh, byte. Basically all of the emails are bigger than that, you search. And then it gives you additional search uh, uh, options. And this is any time here. You'll take any time and you'll choose custom range. And the custom range, you put an end date. Let's say like all the emails that came in uh, from, uh, uh, well, let's say cut off date. It might be uh, end of last year. It might be the end of 2019. Maybe the uh, time when the lock lockdown started and the new era started, whatever. You'll pick the date what you want to choose. I'll book here the 31st of December. 2020 and apply. So now it actually searched me 48 emails that, that arrived me and you can see the last date is 28th of December here. Uh, uh, so you have those emails, you select them, you can delete them, like it's up to you, but you don't have to, I mean, unless you're running out of room in, in Gmail, uh, but then you can archive them, bang. And once you go back to the inbox, it's kind of a little slow on updating, but it shows 152 right now, but if I refresh it, it shows 104. So obviously, you know, you might get like 10,000, 20,000 emails out of your inbox and into your uh, all mail where you can find them later as well. The other thing is obviously uh, look up like emails that, that are repeating, uh, et cetera. For example, I have this Microsoft 365 notifications, which is sent automatically about some new updates. So what I can do here is, uh, and I know all of those is kind of, you know, maybe I want to delete them. I can, uh, but I can filter messages like these. So search, and then it uh, shows me in the inbox all of those messages from my Microsoft 365 and there's 49 of them. So again, you know, I'll select those 
And uh, you can maybe have, add time here. You maybe add time, all the messages that came in before the end of last year from this place, you know, I can, I can archive, obtain them. And, you know, maybe I can even delete them or archive them, right? So, uh, yeah, I think it did it. Did it. So now we are uh, down to 76 emails. I don't know the numbers doesn't add up to the change, but, uh, but anyway, oh, I think it probably looked up also the emails that were that I already archived from uh, from the from the last year. So this is like a really quick ways of how doing that. But then uh, when you are start applying the GTD system to it, is for example, I have emails here. So it's kind of like a play playful system where me as manager sent to my new employee an email like, hey, you know. Uh, we, we are using Teams uh, ourselves. I will activate your access to Teams uh, on Monday. Please ping me if you haven't heard from me by Tuesday morning. So obviously, let's keep this email in my inbox and let's look at it on Tuesday or whatever, you know, and then it will be on the next page by, by Tuesday or something like that. But better thing to do here is that uh, in, uh, uh, in Google, you have the task uh, thing. So you say, click here, add to tasks, and then it loads this tasks app. And uh, it automatically puts on the list, it's someday maybe, which is actually not the right list. So I'll just click it here. I'll move it to the right list, which is waiting for, because this Paul promised me to, uh, you know, uh, to get, get it done for me by, by Tuesday. So I have regarding uh, actually should team list. And then what's really important thing to do is, is to kind of change that name. So uh, so so that when you're looking at, you know, what's, what's going to happen. So. Uh, waiting for uh, Paul to uh, give access uh, to Teams, right? And then I even put a date on here, which is the Tuesday, next Tuesday. Okay, bam. So now it's actually, and this is actually connected to the email. So uh, if I click here, then it opens the email right here. So now I go back to inbox, I'll date this email uh, regarding to your access to, and I archive it. I don't need to give my inbox anymore. And I, I can check my waiting for list. And then if I want to see if the email itself, I can click here and say like, hey, Paul, this is Tuesday. Where's my team's access? Hell, get it done. So, so you can see how you can get like a meaningful stuff out of your inbox as well. And uh, one really cool thing about if you're using the Google Tasks, there is uh, this app called tasksport.app. So watch this, what it does, it's, all it does, it actually creates a different view for the Google Tasks. And it creates this kind of a list of stuff. So. Uh, for example, you can see main board. I have a. It's a Trello board. <laughs> it's a Trello board, pretty much. I mean, you can you can see it differently, but the main thing is it, it uses the, the Google Tasks as you can see like a different view for this as well. But but here is the list are like going down from one another. Uh, it's like I have a project list here. I have my next actions office list here. I'm waiting for, and this this item is right here, not right now. So it kind of makes you easier. For example, do your weekly review and stuff. So so I have I have like different list options here. So I have project list, then I have next actions. Uh, one is for office. Next action, agendas. Agendas is really useful if you're meeting with somebody regularly and you, you're going to want to kind of bring some topics up with them. So with Paul, it's like, uh, for example, I'm, I'm in a situation where I'm a new employee. So I said, like, uh, let Paul know how the first week went. Uh, oh, I wrote Paul wrong. How the first so next up, I'm, I'm having a meeting with Paul. I can, I can look it up here. Like, okay, yeah, once I talk with about this, I can put check, done, right? So, so this is kind of keeping track for, uh, for, for people who work with what you want to talk about then. Uh, I, I got a lot of stuff, you know, I, my, my colleague Neme is, is probably still on the call, hopefully. Uh, and, um, you know, I sometimes in, you know, I, I go to a shower, it's like, oh yeah, I want to talk this about Neme. It's not, nothing to do with shower, it's just that's where the idea came from. Or when I go to bed, it's like, oh yeah, we need to think about this strategy and it's like write down and, and this goes into my Neme's list. And then that's something I'll discuss next time with Neme and, and we have some meaningful discussions, right? Um, so I had the waiting for list, agendas, then next action home, the stuff that I want to do at home, you know, uh, cat food, for example, or cat food, maybe not the right place. I'll go to the right one. Then I have calls, errands. That's where the cat food goes, buy cat food, right? So I, I can look at this. And, and then finally, the someday maybe list as well. And then, you know, because this is an example, I haven't added anything here. It's, it's that how I want to add them. And I, you know, I can, I can go and through all of these emails and show you that, that how to do it, but I guess that will get boring really fast. For example, uh, I'll, there might be some uh, notification here that you want to not only get rid of, but you can also say it, uh, not to delete here, but you can also unsubscribe. That's something as well. You know, if, if you're deleting, check if it's if it's if it has an unsubscribe button. If it's not meaningful for you anymore, then then not unsubscribe it. Right? Use use that thing as well besides just deleting it. And for example, I have this email. Um, just I want to show how someday maybe maybe works. 
is uh, I have this email from Paul with a lot of tasks, what you want to do, you know, I'm not going to add those all to the list, you know, I have maybe some call our accountant, so I'll, that would, would go to a call list, etc. cetera. Um, but I have, for example, here, you might want to enjoy David Allen TEDx talk, are you out of your mind? It's basically pretty much a similar kind of presentation I did to you for your day, but you can go on our website and find it. So actually I'll go and add this to someday maybe list because it's like, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll look at this uh, some, someday, <laughs> this video. Uh, bank, so it didn't uh, bring the link here. Uh, I'll, I can go and get the link, copy link here. This is it, yeah, it's just a small screen. Uh, and, uh, oh, no, here, uh, details, and I've got a details bank. So now the link is here, so I'll, let's really quickly go to the thing, link and then I can delete it. So, and that's now in some day maybe list and I can, I can bring it up there at some point. So this is how you can get uh, your inbox uh, to zero relatively easily. Uh, but obviously the big task is clarifying those things and, and etc. So hopefully that's uh, that's uh, helpful. Let me see. I'll go back to my presentation. Uh, I'm still happy to answer any questions you have. Yeah, Nicolas. Yeah, there's a lot of ambiguous emails. That's where the clarify comes in, right? So you need to kind of decide what what does that mean to you, and that that's making decisions. That's being executive about it, right? Because it, uh, uh, sooner or later, you maybe need to make that call. Like, is that important for me or not? So it might be that uh, it takes a lot of time to actually kind of think it through. So, you, you, but a lot of the stuff is actually so easy. It's just uh, to put it through the clarify step. And, and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's not as hard as it looks. You know? And maybe you make a wrong choice at that point, but then you will learn it from it. And next time you'll, you'll put it on the right list, you know, if, if it goes wrong. So. So, but but leaving it unclear is 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 is, is where where the all the stress and, and overwhelm comes from. Okay. Okay, great. So, up. there is one question in. Uh, in, in yeah, the... Paul, please check. The Andre has question. He has uh, raised the hand. I, I'm not seeing that one for some reason. But Andre, you can just turn on the mic, yeah. like unmute yourself and ask. <laughs> yeah, I'm super, I see. Nicola. Yes, hello, hello. Yes. Yeah. I wanted, to, I wanted to ask if there is a rule, how long uh, time you should spend uh, answering emails and organizing them a day, every day. So uh, how, much is, how much is too much? Uh, so I think it's kind of self-regulating what you usually think uh, for this clarify step, it probably takes an hour to an hour and a half a day. So uh, this is part of your job, actually. This is, this is your part of job as a knowledge worker that you need to clarify what, 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 what has your attention. Uh, if it probably takes more than that, then it's probably you have too much stuff coming in. So actually then, then you can say like, I mean, you can put 400 things in next action list, but you know that you're never gonna get around to them. So it's so probably better to say no to a lot of them. So then, uh, then yeah, hour and hour and a half. And then if it gets more than that, then you probably need to kind of uh, say, start saying no to some stuff or no to some people said like, hey, I just don't have time to do that. Just simple math. So, uh, but, uh, but probably I initially, when you start doing it, if you start implementing GTD system, that's probably gonna take you more, you know, just to get used to it. But yeah, hour and a half, hour and a half long-term is, is kind of what you need to do. Okay. Uh, one question, uh, how do you measure productivity? Uh, we, we don't do that in GTD uh, in, in that sense uh, directly. So it's kind of, uh, and for me, I know some people actually, they say, like, oh yeah, I'm, it's a really good system. Then I can see all the things that I've done. You know, I, I don't usually count all the things that I've done. You know, I hope the, the, the done things count themselves. So in, in a meaningful, like if, if I'm working for somebody, it's like, hey, you get so much stuff done, right? Because, because I can see what you get done. It's like, oh yeah, that's cool. Uh, but um, it's very hard to measure. It's like this one next action might be not it. It might be like, you know, something really simple that you can do in two minutes, or it might be something that, you know, uh, analysis of data that takes you two hours to do. So how do you compare those two, right? And then, well, you know, I had to value it. So, um, so I think maybe the only way to, uh, to measure the productivity is, is do you have everything that has your attention on your list? Is, is, is if, if you, yes, if you do, then, then you're probably productive there. It's kind of a weird way of saying that, but it's, it's uh, kind of rather mental well-being is, is to measure for that. So, but probably I'm, there might be other practices that, that can measure them. Like, yeah, well, you got that much stuff done uh, that week. And, but that's kind of what GDD makes possible, but GDD itself doesn't do it. Right? It just tells you how to do things, not, not you know, how much. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Maris. <laughs> 
yeah, same thanks. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So um, let me see. I'll just maybe a few more slides. Just yeah. Visit gettingthingsdone.de. Our website is currently is in English because we got all of the materials. So I'm not. I didn't make up the training. I, I've been taught the training uh, rigorously how to do it. Uh, and it's um, original materials in English. We just started, we are gonna have a small uh, place. So we haven't, we want to do a good job in translating into Estonian. So, so we don't want to do it uh, like really quickly. So it probably take us a few months, but, uh, but those of you who are working in English, it should be really accessible. So you can learn about this and reach out to us. Oh, we have a, uh, we have a uh, group. So those people who actually said that they're already doing GTD, we have ASD KTD enthusiastic Facebook group. So I'll, I'll put the name on the chat as well. Is to get the enthusiastic, and we have already collected some people there who are the enthusiasts of the GTD system. So you can come there. Oh, a bonus question! I just good. I forget, didn't forget about it. There is one Estonian startup uh, that recently raised uh, uh, well over ten million dollars. That started out as uh, uh, the, uh, the founder's uh, personal GTD system. Does anybody know which uh, which uh, Estonian startup? Which I don't know. They hired two or three hundred people already. 10 years old. Is it a uh, big one? No. Um, maybe, but I don't think they raised that money, right? So, <laughs> so it was another startup recently. Yana, you might know uh, which, which startup uh, raised uh, money in the last two or three months, uh, over 10 million. Over 10 million. You mean this ID.ee or this, um, which is living in uh, UK? No, no, it's it's all fully Estonian. It's Estonian fully founder, Estonian? Estonian company, yeah. 10 million? So it's, no, it's, it's more that than unicorn. It was 16 million. No, it's not unicorn net. No, no, it's about 100 million uh, valuation, I guess. It's, uh, well, it's Scoro. Ah, yes. So Scoro is, uh, is uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm meeting Fred uh, Krieger, who's the founder in the next few weeks. Uh, we met at the GTD summit where I had a picture with David Allen taken as well, but uh, because uh, he, he gonna mention that he that started as a, his personal cheating system because he wasn't happy with the programs that were out there at that time. But later on, it became like the work uh, management system for like an organization. So I'll talk with him and see, you know, how much he thinks that is a personal cheating system, but definitely for organization or something like that. But it's really cool. Even, you know, the GT has uh, this kind of impact besides personal well-being, but also like uh, the impact on Estonian startup scene. So it's really exciting to see. So, yeah. Yes, I'm gonna start to use Scora for Technopol. Yeah, yeah. They yes, they use it. Um, guys, are you already happy? I'm just I'm really sorry, but I need to stop because we have already came over the time, and I have the next meeting, so I I need my Zoom. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm really sorry, sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah. Thanks everybody. But you have the last two minutes if you need to say something. If you need to, I don't know. Send regards to your mom or whatever, because we are live on the Facebook and I will put this uh, live. Uh, yeah. Thank stream. you for the opportunity, Anna. Thank you, everyone.